the first watt F7 is an unusual power amp. It's solid state, it's class A, it's only 20 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 30 watts a channel into 4 ohms and it costs three thousand dollars. So this amp is gonna piss a lot of people off but I think it's pretty good. The F7 is a function over form design. Aside from this thick aluminum face panel everything else about the unit is pretty utilitarian. These heat sinks are unusual in that they run front to back. Normally heat sinks run up and down so you get very good natural convection to draw heat away from the metal. But these from a manufacturing standpoint are interesting because on the inside there's a part of the heat sink that's a horizontal strip and the output circuit boards and transistors are mounted directly to that. You'll notice on the top there are no uh, fussy countersunk screws. These are socket head cap screws into oversized holes so it's very practical. It allows easy assembly and easy alignment without precision tolerances that flat screws would require but it has a more utilitarian look. The amp couldn't be simpler. The inputs are single-ended. That's all there is. No balance connections. You get these basic uh, gold-plated speaker, uh, speaker wire bi binding posts. This is the only on-off switch for the unit. This rocker switch in back. There's a fuse and the power inlet and that is it. There's nothing on the front except two LEDs. There's no switch in front and the spare fuse is just taped to the, uh, to the back panel. You can't get much more basic than this. Here's a nice touch to no bullshit design. These uh, socket head cap screws in front, they did countersink them, but <laughs> the, the heads are clearly visible. There's no attempt to do any blind threaded holes from the back or anything that would actually be weaker and more expensive to do. This is no bullshit. Just put the screws in from the front. That's the most solid way. It's the cheapest way. It, does, it doesn't look as slick, but so be it. And I respect that. I think that's pretty cool. The uh, first watt name here, CNC milled into the face panel. It does have a nice finish on the front. It's a, a fine uh, brushed finish and I assume it's a hard coated uh, aluminum. So it should be pretty durable. When this thing runs, the case gets warm. It doesn't get ridiculously hot and uh, it, it's fine in that regard. I've listened to this for many hours. It, a friend of mine, Bob, has generously let me listen to this for months. He doesn't have a up and running stereo right now, so he's happy to leave it with me and I really appreciate that. Now because I don't own this unit, but I've seen pictures of what's inside and I can describe it for you. There's a decent sized toroidal transformer in front. There's a circuit board in back that has the full wave bridge rectifier and a bunch of uh, PCB, PC board mounted electrolytic capacitors. That's the basically the entire power supply. Then there's attached to these heat sinks a very long narrow circuit board. It looks like a 12 inch ruler almost that has each one there's one on each side for each channel, they're separated. And all that's on each of these boards is two transistors, maybe half a dozen or so resistors, and a few trim pots. And that is it. That's the whole circuit. There's no capacitors in this circuit. If you want to see what's inside, I'll put a link at the video's description to some online pictures. But because they're not my photos, I don't want to put them in the video. The bottom line though is this amplifier is dirt simple. 
it, you literally can't make a much simpler amp. You could make it a little simpler, but not much. That's going to annoy a lot of people. They'll say there's nothing inside for $3,000. But from a sonic perspective, there's advantages to having the simplest possible circuit path. And that's what this provides. To turn the F7 on, you have to reach behind it to flip the rocker switch. And when I do this, you might hear the surge of current into the transformer. Class A power amps draw the same amount of power, whether they're idling, playing music softly, or blasting music. I've got the F7 plugged into this watt meter, and I'm going to turn it on. Now the power's on, and it's reading about it's reading 130 watts, 129 watts. That's what it draws all the time that it's on. This amp was designed by Nelson Pass. And his company, First Watt, is a sister company to Pass Labs. First Watt products are focused on low-powered amps where he can quickly or, or slowly, at his leisure, design novel circuits and make small runs of them to sell. It's all pretty conservatively designed so it, it's just really simple. I think it'll be very reliable. High quality low power amps have always had an appeal to me but I've never had speakers efficient enough to be able to use amps like that and still play my system loud. So that's one of the reasons I chose the Klipsch Cornwalls, is they're very efficient and 20 watts per channel is plenty of power to play them and enjoy them. First Watt is doing a bit of a cheat on this amp. It's harder to drive than a regular power amp. So it's, it puts more strain on the preamp, and in a way that's not fair. It, it's really forcing your preamp to do more of what I would say a power amp should do. But it seems my Audio Research SP9 can drive it okay. I suspect with a gutsier preamp output stage, the F7 would sound even better. Enough tech talk. Now, how, so how does the first Watt F7 sound? Well, compared to my Emotiva UPA200, which is an 80 watt per channel, I believe, solid state class AB power amp, the F7 strips away a glare and a hashiness that I didn't know was there until I listened to the F7. The F7 has a much more natural sound. It's much better at give, describing the character of each individual instrument. You know, the rosin on the bow of a cello, the grippiness of the strings, or the delicate uh, cymbal shimmer. Uh, the voices are just clearer and more... Um, not sure what the word, but just more revealing without any artifact added. Bass is tight, surprisingly tight from and strong from a little 20 watt amp. Another thing I really like about the sound of the F7 is this sense of ease. It's a very relaxed sounding amplifier. Now by relaxed I don't mean that it's not dynamic. What I mean is when there are uh, peaks in the music, it doesn't sound like it's straining compared to my Emotiva amp. And I find that to be a characteristic of a lot of Class A amplifiers. I don't think, it, it does not sound particularly airy, um, this power amp, but it doesn't sound closed down either. It sounds about right. It sounds pretty real to me. 
Now, you might say, well, what do you know about amps? Your only other amp you've had is a UPA 200, a $300 Emotiva Class AB amp. Well, that's true right now, but I used to have big Krell Class A power amps, and I'm pretty familiar with the sound of amps. I've owned maybe 10 amps over my lifetime. I just don't have them now to compare them to. So the F7 requires efficient loudspeakers or it's not going to play loud enough for you. But with that caveat and the caveat that your preamplifier has to be able to adequately drive the F7, this may be the nicest sounding solid state power amp I've ever heard.